Okay, jump assignment number three. Uh, this is your last assignment in jump. Uh, I'm going to extend the due date to May 8th, so you have enough time to work on it. Uh, so, up to you. Uh, so, the, the whole idea of this assignment that you are going to go over the same data that you use for your uh, Excel dashboard uh, for where one, uh, which was the second half of the midterm uh, exam. And what you're going to do now, you are going to use all the knowledge that you got from using the statistical analysis in JAM and use that knowledge such as looking at the distribution of the variables, looking at the correlation between the variables, looking at the creation of maybe uh, the profit growth uh, in, as a linear regression model with association with other variables. So whatever we learned uh, over the second half of the semester, try to apply it to this data. And there's no guidelines, this is you, the same way you did in your Excel dashboard. You are given this data uh, from the CEO of the Aware One company and your job to bring back some uh, resolution or some patterns that you noticed in the data, okay? So to be able to create a dashboard, I have to show you uh, how to do the dashboard in Jump. Uh, and since I don't want to use your data, I'm going to use another data, uh, which is San Francisco crimes uh, data. And in this way, you will learn some additional uh, aspect uh, of, uh, of jump, such as how you can bring the Google map into jump and how you can interact with it uh, with your data. So some elements that you might not use in your final project. However, it's good to know that it's available in jump. Okay, and I'm going to add this folder with those step-by-step -step, uh, directions how I created the dashboard uh, and the San Francisco <coughs> sorry, crime data. However, you don't have to repeat the steps. It's, it's for you uh, to practice. Let's put it in this way. Okay, so uh, let us go to jump first and open the data. Uh, of course, you might have the data in Excel or you might have it in Jump. doesn't matter. You can export in both ways. So let us open first the data. Uh, with a look at this data, you can uh, see this is from the title. It's a crimes in San Francisco. So we have the incident number, the date of the crime, the time, day of the week. We have the category, what type of crime was committed, and more descriptions about the crime. Also, if it was a traffic incident or not and the resolution, what uh, happened really, if that uh, uh, burglary happened in that street, when the police came in, were they able to arrest the person or the person, you know, escaped, you know? So that's uh, the meaning of resolution. Uh, it depends uh, this where it occurred, which district of the police that specific incident happened at. And we also have the longitude and latitude information, which is really important, okay? So, as usual, each row of this data represent one case scenario, which in our way represent one incident. So, let us start first, as usual, to create some charts to help us uh, dive into this data. I'm not going to create distribution because you learned all those stuff, so I'm going to create some stuff that you are not familiar with to add it to your repertoire uh, about jump. But feel free to use the things that you learned during the second half of the semester in your final project as well. And you must, maybe. Okay, so let's open the graph builder. Based on this data, so imagine like you are hired as analyst uh, for this police headquarter, and they're asking for your help in uh, analyzing this data. So what, what kind of help you can give them? So imagine the following, that you really want to know where most of those incidents occurred, when they occurred, and how many of them occurred, and if you can really uh, see a pattern in those incidents, you might tell the, uh, the chief of the, uh, of the district that uh, uh, they should put units, police units in that area in that specific time, so this way they can uh, lower uh, the, uh, the, the amount of incidents happening in that district. So let us start with something we didn't learn this semester, which is the uh, what is called the heat map. So 
according to this data, I want to look at the beginning. Here's the um, the exact police district. I want to see it. Uh, they're really distinguished between one district to other districts. We always know that, yes, uh, some areas are more dangerous than other areas in any city uh, in the world. So let us map that. So I'm going to bring uh, for that the police district as my Y. And I would like to see over time what kind uh, of incidents are happening here, how many incidents are happening. So remember, this information is about incidents. So every row is representing an incident. So mentioning the district, that's me, when incident happened here, we, 820 incident happened in that specific first district. And the park, uh, we have about 534 incidents happened. Okay, so let us bring now the time and see if there is some pattern. Okay, as I said, some you have to get used to it while using more your application. So that is not really a uh, descriptive way as a uh, plot box uh, to give me information. So I'm going to use, uh, as I said, the heat map. So by click on the heat map, you get the following. As you can see, in, instantly you can tell a story about what's happening in San Francisco. Now this just this corner is highlighted only because I have selected the incident. So I'm going to just uh, take it away. Go back. So. As you can see, uh, so the 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 red color represents the highest number of incidents. In this case, the highest number of incidents in this data uh, in districts is 350 incidents, and the lowest is the blue, the zero. So we're going from the blue to the red, and of course you can change the coloring system in Jump and some of those settings under uh, the file. I'm not gonna teach you how to do that, but Google it, you can find some different uh, color coding if you don't like that. However, the story here is the following. We can see a pattern of, uh, of a lot of incidents happening in Southern District, okay? And mainly, look here, 319 incidents happened between the time 3 and 6 p.m. So that would be one of the patterns you can give the uh, the chief of that district saying, yeah, apply more units in, in that area uh, that happening the incidents and uh, you will reduce the amount or you can you'll be able to uh, to get hold of those criminals and lower the number of crimes in that region. So I like this uh, chart, so I'm going to save it to, to use it in my dashboard. So I'm going to click on done and then from the red uh, the triangle, I'm going to go to save a script and save it to the table. So remember always to save your work. Let's say jump crash, something happened, at least you have uh, a copy of your uh, analysis. I'm, I'm going to minimize and as you can see when you minimize you have a thumbnail over here about that specific chart we created. Second one, I would like to take advantage of the longitude and latitude to map exactly uh, this incidence on San Francisco map. So let us see how we can do this. Click in the graph, graph builder, and then, and more specifically, what I'm gonna try to do uh, is I would like to uh, see exactly uh, based on the information we have here, uh, where the concentration of specific incidents are happening. So for example, I'm gonna drag for that just the latitude to my y-axis and the longitude to my x-axis. Okay, and always we have this smooth line, uh, so I'm gonna take it off in, in this type of graphic uh, map make no sense and some other graphs could be just a concentration how 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 it looks the data were concentrated the most okay now I want to bring the map and this is the map and I got and like it's a dynamic map which means it comes from the internet you need to be connected to the internet to be able to get it uh, right to click on any place on this white uh, background of your chart and then from the graph you can click on the background map 
and we have a lot of options here however the one i'm going to use is called the street map service which is available through some open uh, database license uh, jump has uh, so that's a good tool to use i'm going to say okay so i don't need, even need to tell uh, the program that this is san francisco automatically it went to the web and brought for me an, a dynamic map. So if I uh, if I want to minimize, there are options here to minimize, maximize. If you drag uh, your arrows, I'm not going to do it, but you can zoom in, zoom out. You can do whatever you want. However, so what we are seeing here, we are seeing all those incidents color coded uh, and their distribution in San Francisco. And you can see there is a concentration in that specific area over here. Okay, so you might consider using something called a filter uh, in your, this is your, something you're not going to use in your dashboard, but I'm going to show you how you can use it. Uh, so click on the red uh, rectangle in the graph builder, and then let us go to local data filter. It opens another window, uh, similar to what we have, the attributes, it's asking you which one you want it to be your filter. And in this case, I want the category. I want to know the incident. And I'm going to click on Add. So now what you have here, OK, what you have here is what this category has. So if I click on Arson, as you can see, it's going to dynamically, did you see the refreshing? Dynamically went to the web, refreshed the map only in that location that those arsons are happening. And you can see the points, exactly the location uh, of those incidents. Okay. So, for example, let's say fraud or uh, kidnapping. I want to concentrate on kidnapping in, uh, in San Francisco area. So we have 15 and all of them are in this area. So, so you might uh, send, and here is one, you might send specific units uh, specialized in that type of uh, uh, forensic to go to those areas and to be able to uh, monitor uh, the location. Or maybe you need to install more cameras in those areas. Okay, specifically in those areas that more patterns are happening. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, how about the drugs? Okay, so we have it all distributed in San Francisco. However, we see here a concentration, a definite concentration. I would say in this area, this area a little bit, and this area here. So that's another analysis you can give to, uh, to your uh, director. So I'm not going to use the filter, so I'm going to clear those. We'll come back to the map that as we started, and I'm going to take off uh, the uh, remove the local data filter. I don't need it. I'm just showing you the feature so you can use it in future on your own. OK, I'm done with the map. This is how I want it. I'm going to keep it in this way. I'm going to say done. And I'm going to save, of course. OK, remember always save. And this is my table. Uh, you can give it a different name up to you just to remember which one. And I'm going to minimize, not close. I'm going to have it as a thumbnail. So now we have two shards. Uh, we created two shards that we're going to use in our dashboard. Beside that, I'm going to go ahead and, and create some type of, uh, uh, of information about okay, we know, we noticed in our last uh, shard that we have different type of incidents, we want to know how many overall and which one is the highest number in San Francisco and which ones are the lowest type of crimes in San Francisco. So asking that question, it means that I want uh, to know exactly based on those categories over here, their numbers, counts, just counts. So I'm going to use um, the graph builder as well and in this case only i want the category all i want is just do a bar chart for me uh, for the type of incidents in san francisco if you it, it's it will look better if we sort it so i'm gonna right click on the y-axis and order by and uh, let's say descending order or maybe even ascending order okay that's even better okay so ascending order okay it's going from zero to the top and you can see here how much about 2097 
cases, incidents uh, of attempt theft of property. So that will be a very good description of uh, how many cases we have. And of course, you can change the color. I'm not going to teach you that. Google it and you will find how you can change the colors if you want it. Now I'm done. I'm going to click on done. And that's the third chart that I would like to use in my dashboard. So we're going to save the script to a table. And as you can see here, we're going to have the third chart available for us. Now let us minimize this. Beside that, I'm going to create the last one, which is I want to see, okay, we had all these incidents. How effective is the police department? Did they catch the criminals or not? And how is the percentage or the comparison between the one that they really arrested and the ones they couldn't, you know, they escaped? And we have that as the following column, the resolution. So we have that, none, arrested or cited, arrested or booked, we have that information. So let us uh, share this information. And I'm going to create, in this case, fit Y by X. And uh, um, OK, in this case, I'm going to have uh, the, my Y will be the resolution, what happened, OK? You can drag it, you can just click on Y, so you will have this one here. And that happens, I want to see if it's happening uh, based on the day of the week, so I can have a better understanding over the weeks, what's happening, and what uh, percentage is the differentiation, those units who work over the weekend compared to the ones weekdays, so you can make your analysis. So, based on the day of the week, how about that? Okay. So it's going to create mosaic. So remember, when you have two categorical variables, uh, you're going to end up with contingency table. OK, the one I closed. Uh, so you, it's only a contingency table that represents uh, the count, the total, the number of columns, and the association between them. And as you can see here, a very quick uh, view, the non is this pink area. The the biggest area we have here. The green are arrest and cited, and the red, red, arrest and book. Of course, you can change the color. I'm leaving it to you. The story here, you can say that let us merge those two because both of them happened, ended up with arrest. So I would say 25% of the incidents that happened in San Francisco on average were solved. So one quarter only of the crimes were ended up with arrest. Okay, now you can see variation here that, uh, for example, here uh, on on Saturday is the lowest. The most arrest happens in on Wednesday, as you can see here. Okay, it's it's higher. It's almost forty percent, maybe or thirty-five. Let's say. Okay. So that would be a story. So you might look at who is uh, uh, okay on uh, in charge in that period of time and map it again into the map that you have and what type of crimes that were solved. Uh, maybe those are easy cases. So you have to look into all the parameters. So I'm going to save this one as well. And this will be my last uh, chart for the dashboard. OK, I'm going to minimize. So now, how to create a dashboard. So we have four charts available for us to start our dashboard. I'm going to save this data with uh, my analysis, temporary. And now, uh, we're going to create the dashboard. Make sure you have the thumbnails. When you create a dashboard, you need to have your reports open in this way. Otherwise, the dashboard will not see them, and then you have to go back and reopen them. So from File and New, go to dashboard and from here you have templates you can pick any type of templates like you feel like you like uh, in my case here i'm gonna use a simple one with filter which means like this chart over here will control the rest so i'm gonna double click this that's gonna be my chart uh my dashboard okay you can change the name uh, add your name okay Okay, that's it. You can make it maximize it, the font, etc. But I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, what else? You can add pictures to your dashboard. You can add textbook, whatever you want. Uh, you can add uh, data filter as well. 
the one I showed you, you can add it here. In the time being, I'm not going to do any of those, but feel free to use it on your data. You know how to use it now. So I'm going to use uh, the heat map as my filter, which means anytime I'm clicking any place in the heat map, it's going to re reflect the other shards. I'm going to bring the, uh, the contingency. Then I want to bring also the graph builder, but I want it to be like a tab and not another. Like you can add it in this way so you have multiple shards, but I don't want to do that. Uh, so I am going to say Control Z. I want to add the other shard over here as a tab. So when you see the square at the top uh, right area, this is where uh, it knows that this is going to be a tab. And from the arrow here, you can change the default chart that's going to show on the when your dashboard is done, and and the rest will be only tabs. Okay, so we're gonna you're gonna see it. So bear with me a couple of minutes, you will see what I'm talking about. And that's my last one. So also I want it as a tab. Okay, and I want actually the map to be the tab. So this one, the weight, so if I click this one, it's gonna be the default. If you click this one, that one, one will be the default. In my case, I want the chart to be the default. So that's correct. I'm gonna save this. Let's save it as uh, dashboard. But that's not the file that you're gonna send me, okay? It's not the file GRP, okay? It's not the uh jump report i don't want that i'll tell you what i want you to send me in a couple of minutes for your final project okay uh that's it so let me save also the script to data and you notice there are some different type of saving i didn't teach you but it's okay so now now we're gonna run the dashboard we're gonna make it alive so we can interact with it so you click on the red uh, uh, triangle and click run dashboard and you have to wait a little bit for it will take some time until it's reacting uh, and reflecting okay and based on your internet and how many people are using the dashboard at the same time because in my case here I have a map so it needs to go to the internet to look at the map Okay, so for some reason I brought this map in a different way that I wanted. I don't want it to be, remember the boxes we saw, but at least we can see here the tabs that I was telling you, okay, about, okay? And you can change the way they look, doesn't matter. Uh, let me save this. So this is the one, remember this blue line, you click on it to open. So file, save as, and this is, the dashboard okay i'm gonna keep it yes dashboard new, yes okay uh what else i wanted to do something else want to show you how you can save it also as interactive uh okay uh, save as so you have options here to create interactive html with data which will be a web a page that you can publish it on the web and anyone can watch it from their phone from your ipad from your, their computer and look at your information that would be really cool let me fix this chart and come back to this option okay so i'm gonna close this now from here uh, i'm gonna make sure i'm gonna delete this chart and make sure to put it again see if it's gonna work this time okay and let me save we changed the time for some reason no idea why okay so now let us run it remember you have to run it before you um, now it makes more sense to me see how much difference is now so now if you click on any place on the heat map this is the filter It's gonna filter the information on the right side uh, so I have this one. I know exactly where in Southern District during the time six to nine, what kind of incidents are happening. So even you can look at it. This is a fraud. Uh, the yellow uh, that will be suspicious. Uh, what arrest? Uh, suspicious something something. Okay. Uh, what else? We have OCC. We have to know what the mean is based on the data. What uh, occurrence? Okay, suspicious occurrence. So that's 
And as I said, you can deselect this by clicking the control one more time. So now we have our map perfectly uh, the way I would like to have it. And also here, so as you can see, it's inter interactively reacting to your filter. And that's how the way we want it. So if you want uh, the lowest uh, number of crime, remember, so let's see here, uh, three incidents. So period of time. Uh, if I'm interested in that area specifically, I uh, can tell you how many incidents, 232 and look at the variety. So now we have better understanding uh, of the type of data. Also remember the contingency when I told you that I want to know, okay, so this specific one, so let me unselect, okay, this is all the data, let's say this one here. Uh, between three to six okay and in that uh, specific time and if you remember in the southern district so uh, the green is was not resolved uh, so also we have Sunday 25% were ended up with arrest so that means the unit was working really over the weekend as you can notice I like a lot of complaints okay and the lowest arrest here not the pattern we saw in the other data uh, was actually Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Wednesday was higher arrest. So, so now the data. Oh, I'm happy with this data. I'm gonna create an interactive uh, HTML page. So I'm gonna save it as. Uh, okay. Um, this one here. So when you're gonna send me uh, your project, I want you to send it as a jump report. Okay, this one but from the running section that you saw me now. Uh, okay, so let me select the interactive one and I say save. And I'm gonna show you what happens. It's gonna open the web, open the browser. And now see uh, this, if you publish this over the web, anyone has access to this data will be able to see it. Okay. Uh, Nice, isn't it? Now there's an option also with Jump to uh, publish on their site if you created an access. Uh, okay, I think mm, public. Yeah, public.jump.com. So if you really are interested with other people, what they have been doing there, so you can sign in with your uh, Western email and the mention that you have uh, SAS Jump. And in this way, they will give you a location here that you can upload your report to it. So that's in future, that's not required, but just to let you know. And you can watch for a lot of people what they are doing over here. That's it. So your job now is the following. Well, you learned how to do a dashboard uh, and your job is to uh, go back to your Excel data. Okay. So this is the Excel data, download it. And then, let's say, label editing, I'm going to save it, file, save as. And let's say here, okay, I'm going to save it under the folder BDN, save. Now you're going to go to your jump, let me pause. Okay, so let us bring your project data from file, open, and uh, the finance sample data. We're going to open it. Uh, it's going to look at it, make sure everything's correct. Okay, it's seeing the, uh, it has column header. Okay, the header is on top. The number row start of one, perfect, and say import. Now from here, you're going to start working on your data and creating your charts. Make sure to save your project as jump. So this is final uh, jump dashboard. Okay, and you work on your dashboard and you're going to uh, send me only, we're going to upload uh, to, um, uh, to Blackboard two files 
one the word document to show me what kind of analysis you tried on your data and you might take screenshot of it as you wish and the second file will be your uh, jump report uh, dashboard that's it